you get here? Good morning. Good morning. Uh, you'll kind of have to bear with me this morning because I haven't figured out yet how to keep my glasses from fogging over. So if I can't see what's on the paper, then forgive me. But anyway, we have some uh, announcements this morning. Uh, for those of you who are watching on Zoom, if you have prayer concerns, put them in the all chat box so that we can, we can get them to everybody else. Uh, Logos starts this Wednesday. Um, I think that you said the, the high school kids met last week and the younger ones will come this week. If the USDA food um, outreach continues, which we don't know yet whether it will or not, uh, we need volunteers on Wednesday. So, um, oh, okay, I guess it's Thursday. Um, anyway, so watch the Facebook page for that information or check with the office, okay? Let's start with the call to worship. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, call upon his name, make known his deeds among the peoples. Sing, Sing, Sing praises, praises to him, him. tell of all his wondrous works. Glory in his holy name, let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Seek the Lord and his strength, seek his presence continually. Remember the wondrous works that he has done, his miracles and the judgments he uttered. O oh, offspring of Abraham, servant, children of Jacob, his chosen ones. Come, join with me in standing as you are able and singing together our hymn of praise, Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee, page 464 in your hymnal. Are we using hymnals? Okay. We have been buried with Christ in baptism in order that we might be raised to new life with him through faith in the power of God. Trusting then in God's grace, let us confess our sin. 
holy and merciful God, in your presence we confess our failure to be what you created us to be. You alone know how often we have sinned in wandering from your ways, in wasting your gifts, in forgetting your love. By your loving mercy, help us to live in your light and abide in your ways for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Lord God, hear us now as we confess our sin before you. Friends, hear the good news. Our righteousness is found in Christ alone, a gift of God by faith. Beloved people of God, believe the good news. Through the grace of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. Let us share the peace of Christ with one another. Oh, technology. I tested it at the beginning of this service. If you were here early enough, you heard it go on and heard the sound working and everything. Um, it's already posted on the church website, so you can grab it off the... Oh. Wow, that is a lot of beautiful food. The 
Lord God, pour out your spirit upon us to bring good news to the oppressed and let your word be fulfilled among us through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Thank you, Judy, for your leadership in worship this morning. And of course, I continue to offer thanks to Holly and whomever of her <laughs> daughters who helped with this particular video. So thank you to Holly. I have two readings for you today. Our New Testament reading today comes from Galatians chapter 5 verses 22 and 23. Galatians 5, 22 and 23. Let us all now listen for the word of the Lord. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things there is no law. And the sermon text today comes from Psalm 95. It is the entire, no, 1 through 7a. Psalm 95, verse 1 through 7a. O come, let us sing to I am who I am. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. For I am who I am is a great God and a great king above all gods. In his hand are the depths of the earth, the heights of the mountains are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands formed the dry land. O come and let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before I am who I am, our maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. The word of God for the people of God. Let us pray. <clears throat> and now, Lord God, may the words of my mouth and meditations of all our hearts be pleasing and acceptable in thy sight, 
our rock and our redeemer. Amen. For our examination today is the question, what is joy? Right off the bat, I am going to contend that distinct from a feeling or emotion like happiness or contentment, joy is a choice. I believe that I have got pretty substantial biblical backing as well as theological backing to bear out my contention. First, then why is joy not a feeling or emotion like happiness? Because I can imagine that the majority of you have been thinking that joy, when you read the sermon title or uh, in the bulletin or read about it, the topic in the email or wherever you saw that this was today's topic, I'm, I'm imagining that the majority of you have been thinking that joy is exactly that, a better version or a deeper version of happiness. And so now perhaps you are a bit thrown off when I make, when I make the contention that in reality, I believe the two are nothing alike. Emotions are informative and temporary. Happiness is an emotion. Happiness tells us that something um, or someone outside of ourselves has had some kind of impact on us that we find enjoyable, feels good. As that is the information given, we then go about trying to replicate the emotion by reproducing the scenario or by reproducing the impact so that we can feel good again. Pursuing happiness then can actually become a kind of false god if we're not careful. A false idol that produces false contentment. The happiness is fleeting. It is temporary. And so then to try to be happy is a pursuit of a false contentment that constantly leaves us feeling lacking. And that does not feel good. So then to feel good, we worship happiness in the pursuit thereof by indulging in the scenarios and things outside of ourselves, which make us feel good even despite their temporariness, despite the fleeting nature of the emotion. And when you dedicate that much time to something, to doing and seeking things that only make you feel good, you have very little to zero time for anything else. And the lie you tell yourself becomes complete. I'm not saying happiness is bad. I'm just saying it is not joy. Happiness is informative and temporary. As such, it should not become the all-consuming center of our world. Again, my contention, joy is a choice. In our epistle reading this morning from Galatians, I reminded everyone that joy is one of what Paul refers to as the fruits of the Spirit. And here, let's check our biblical texts. In my text, anyway, the translators have capitalized Spirit, thereby indicating that these fruits are something provided or given by the Holy Spirit. They are not fruits of my own personal spirit, then, not something I am able to do when I have achieved some type of elevated spiritual state. They are gifts given to humanity for humanity's choice as to whether or not to utilize them. I do not know if you've noticed it before about these fruits of the Spirit, but what I noticed this time reading through is that really, if you get down to it, all of them are choices. Love is a choice. If we allow it to remain in the realm of emotion, love is fleeting. Love has no permanence. Love has no power. But we proclaim that God is love. God is permanent. God is power. Therefore, love is those things too and becomes a choice we make moment by moment. Peace is a choice. Peace is not something we wait for someone else to establish for us. You may have observed, sarcasm intended, that there is little to zero peace right now throughout our country and throughout the world. I contend it is because we are refusing to make the hard decision to choose it. 
We continue to retreat to our silos and echo chambers of the news and Facebook and consume more and more of the memes of hate and vitriol spewed out against those people. Ironically, it seems as if for some, this continued non-peacemaking has become an idealized false god pursuit of happiness. <laughs> Ironically, non-peacemaking makes people feel good because they spend more time with folks who think like them. You cannot choose peace, though, when everybody thinks the same. That's indoctrination. Patience is a choice. Some days I'm able to choose it with my children, as, uh, as, as no doubt many of you have experienced. And some days I am not able to choose patience. And all I can do is apologize to my children when I make the poor choice of not choosing patience. Kindness is also a choice, different from niceness where you smile politely while you stab someone in the gut to their face. Kindness is the discipline of choosing to treat everyone with politeness and respect at all times, even when no one is looking. Goodness is the choice to be a disciple of Jesus, to put others before yourselves, to look also to the interest of others, to recognize your own needs. Let's not forget that. To recognize your own needs and desires, and then to understand that sometimes the needs of others outweigh your own, and to choose the needs of others. Faithfulness is a choice. I choose to believe that as it says in the Gospel of John, the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. I choose to believe it, even when it feels like darkness is winning. I choose to believe it, even when it feels like the darkness of oppression is smothering and choking out the good. I choose to believe that even a little bit of light can reveal and overpower a whole lot of dark. Gentleness is a choice. In our world in which we have com continued to idolize and emulate brashness, gruffness, and toughness as ideals, gentleness is often looked on with disdain. Gentleness gets nothing accomplished. And yet, we see here, according to Paul, gentleness is a gift from God that we can choose to utilize. Maybe it could be a tool in our arsenal as we seek peace. Self-control is also a choice, an individual choice. Self-control is not something for which others need to moderate themselves so that it can be practiced. Self-control is a choice that we make for ourselves and we can exercise it ourselves. So then, if the other fruits of the Spirit are choices, then does it not follow that joy, too, is a choice? And then, if indeed joy is a choice, then that sheds a whole lot of light on that notorious passage from James, right, in chapter 1, where he tells us, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of any kind, consider it nothing but joy. What? How? What? How? If joy, then, is a choice, then perhaps so too is the call here to choose to face the trials and work through them. Perhaps that's the joy. Be they physical trials, emotional trials, spiritual trials, or legal trials, working through them is the choice. And that is the joy. Not even overcoming them, just working through them. Some paraplegics never regain the use of their legs, and in working through the trial, in choosing to face the trials and choosing joy, they find a new wholeness, a new completeness in various competitive sports. Those are some impressive athletes. I don't know if you've ever watched them. Zipping about the basketball court in their wheelchairs or playing ultimate frisbee, they can do that too. By choosing joy and choosing to face the trial, they do not go backwards to what was. 
They move forward into what can be. They move forward toward wholeness and completeness. But here's the irony. Trials do not have to be faced, right? We can bury our head in the sand and pretend that the trial does not exist or hope that it magically and mystically goes away. Lawyers have a myriad of ways of filing injunctions and briefs and motions so as to, in practicality, permanently delay any kind of trial. But if we choose joy, if we choose the joy to face the trial, not just to face it, uh, if we choose the trial just to face it and work through it, just to face it and work through it, James tells us in the following verses that such a voice produced, such a choice produces endurance. And endurance has the capacity to make you complete, to make you whole. Joy is a choice. The esteemed author and theologian, some would argue the most profound theologian of the 20th century, C.S. Lewis contends that even more specifically, joy is a choice for God. Joy is choosing the divine. Joy is the divine. In Surprised by Joy, one of his books, we read, but what in conclusion of joy? And here I'll note that Lewis capitalizes the word joy. But what in conclusion of joy? For that, after all, is what the story has mainly been about. To tell you the truth, the subject has lost nearly all interest for me since I became a Christian. As we choose whether or not to receive God's amazing gifts of grace and love, so too do we choose joy, or we do not. If Lewis, that is, if Lewis is correct that joy is God, then this further supports the argument that joy is a choice and not an emotion. As discussed earlier, emotions are fleeting and temporary despite their usefulness in the information they provide. God is permanent, eternal. If joy is God, then joy is permanent, eternal, and not temporary. Joy then is beyond and greater than the momentary nature of happiness or contentment. And joy then is something we can choose to enter into, much in the same way that we can choose to accept the gifts of grace and love, or not. And this is precisely where vulnerability intersects with joy, right? Joy and vulnerability is the title of the sermon. This is precisely where vulnerability intersects with joy. To be vulnerable is to acknowledge that you alone, individually, cannot meet all of your needs. nor can one other person. To be vulnerable then is to acknowledge that there is something bigger, greater, wiser, holier than yourself. Joy and vulnerability intersect in that it is a confession that you cannot manifest joy by yourself. You cannot make yourself joyful. Joy requires the divine. The psalmist's joy in this morning's reading is about God, strictly. It's only about God. Everything about the psalm and the joy is directed towards who and what joy is. I am who I am, the rock of our salvation, a great God, a great King, our Maker. The choice, then, it seems, of joy stems from knowing God by name. yod Vavhe, vav -Heh. I am who I am, the very breath we breathe. The choice of joy stems from knowing that salvation belongs to God and God alone. 
The choice of joy stems from knowing that God is greater than any other false god somebody might try to convince us of. The choice of joy stems from knowing that God is our king. Not the president, not a political party, not an ideology. Nothing and no one else. Joy is knowing that God and God alone is king. So then the choice before us today is clearer than it has ever been. Joy. Will we make the choice for it? Will we choose joy even when it is hard to do so? Even when we do not want to be vulnerable? I am going to continue to try to choose joy. And I hope that each of you will as well. Amen. As, as we give thanks to God for God's words, we transition into our response to those words by beginning with the common affirmation of our faith. The Apostles' Creed, please stand. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried, he descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. And thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sin, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. Remember the words of the Lord Jesus, it is more blessed to give than to receive. During this time of the COVID-19 pandemic, we humbly ask that pledges and donations be dropped off in the indicated basket in the narthex, either prior to or after the worship service. Thank you for those pledges continuing to come in. And so we will give thanks, let us pray. Thank you for these God, for these Thank you, God, for these gifts which we continue to receive. Give us wisdom and discernment as best how to utilize them for the upbuilding of your kingdom. May your divine will be done and not our own. Amen.
Please be seated. What uh, prayers, what concerns and joys do people have? I'll write down some extras that I know so I don't forget. then please join with me in prayer. Almighty God, you created the heavens and the earth and humankind in your image. Teach us to discern your hand in all your works and to serve you with reverence and thanksgiving. Through Christ Jesus, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Lord God, there are many things weighing on us this Sunday morning. And so, Lord God, as indicated, we lift up to you all the chaos of the rampant wildfires throughout the western United States. Uh, we ask for uh, weather to help in battling those. We ask for wisdom and discernment and safety for those battling those blazes and for those who may need to get out of the way of those blazes. We ask for wisdom and discernment as people decide whether to rebuild or to, re, or to remove <laughs> and to move someplace else. Lord God, we are also in need of prayers for uh, the various scientists and immunologists and uh, medical professionals and those who work in developing uh, policies and procedures to keep us safe and who develop vaccines to keep us safe. And so we ask that you would give them wisdom and discernment such that all may be able to be as safe as possible. For individual members of our community, Lord God, we lift up to you Jordan Lands as she continues to recover from a concussion. We ask uh, that, um, that, that that recovery would be complete and full uh, and that she would be safe. Concussions are no laughing matter. They are dangerous and so 
We ask for your hand upon Jordan and um, that your healing, that you would bring healing to her. Also, we lift up Lynn Lands to you as he is uh, uh, recovering from a sinus surgery procedure. Um, we ask that uh, this procedure would have brought relief and would have brought a conclusion to the issues that uh, caused the surgery to happen in the first place. Well, God, we lift up to you Beth Rogers and her husband Randy, Beth especially, who continues to be in the hospital uh, in dealing with trying, in, in dealing with repercussions and ramifications of contracting COVID-19. And we ask that uh, you would bring healing and recovery. And of course, we lift up to you their daughter Haley, who has taken on the lion's share of caring for her parents. Uh, the roles have been reversed and that is never a fun time. And so we ask, uh, we know that of course, all family are rallying and helping and contributing and we the church seek to do the same. Um, but we know that it is a special burden on Haley and so ask for your peace and uh, peace that passes understanding and comfort to be upon her. We lift up Swede to you as he continues to recover from uh, a couple of different back procedures. Uh, both Swede and Betty have indicated uh, gratitude in, in, in feeling loved and cared for by this community and an equal desire to rejoin us. And so we ask that you would help Swede to recover swiftly. And we ask that uh, our dear beloved friends would be able to join us again soon. Lord God, we lift up Kay Danker and Bertha Rickardson to you. Matriarchs of this congregation, of this church, we ask that you would abide, that uh, you would remind them that you are ever present and that in you there is great joy. Lord God, all these things that we've prayed and all those things that we have neglected to pray for, we are confident and lift them before you. You know our hearts, you know our need, even before we know them ourselves. Thank you for Messiah who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Uh, I do invite you to stand with me as you are able and join in singing our closing hymn, number 430, Come Sing, O Church. Enjoy. <laughs>
received his benediction. Now may the God of peace, who brought back from the dead our Lord Jesus, who gave shepherds and sheep by the blood of the eternal covenant, and who can see, and everything good that he would do his will, will be in us that which is true to himself.